Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Tuesday, October 29th. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the Monday night football game that saw the Steelers take care of the Giants at home, 26 to 18. In this segment, we start off our NFL Power Rankings. It is Rankings Tuesday, of course, so we're going to start off, as always, with ranks 32 to 17. But before we do that, Remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate everybody so much for tuning in, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Tuesday, October 29th. But like I was saying, into the pan- the, the NFL power rankings for week nine. Starting off at number 32, it is the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers at the bottom for the second week in a row. The Carolina Panthers continue to show that they have something, but it doesn't amount to much. That defense is one of, the, if one of, if not the worst in all of football. They turn back to Bryce Young after Andy Dalton gets into a car accident and had been struggling the last couple of the week, uh, last couple of weeks. He comes out and puts up a solid performance against a good Broncos defense, putting up 14 points. Even if seven of those came in garbage time, it was a very Good game from Bryce Young, one of the best that we've seen all season from him. If he can continue to play like that coming up in Germany this week against the Giants, that is going to be a big game to see what his future looks like with with the Panthers, with another team. We will see as the trade deadline quickly approaches. The Panthers are number 32. At 31, it's the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders just continue to look horrible in just about everything that you could possibly expect them to look horrible in. The Raiders, once again, don't have much offense going. They have a superstar at tight end. They cannot get them into the end zone, as good as the Raiders want to be. And I know it was against the Chiefs. Still, they can't get the run game going. They're able to put up 20 points, and Gardner Minshew has his moments. He always has his moments, but it's not enough. This is a Raiders team that has holes just about everywhere. They don't really have a run game. Alexander, When Alexander Madison is your lead back, you have an issue. They need to go out, and they probably should be selling at the deadline. We will see them. Raiders are 31. At number 30, it's the Tennessee Titans. They get maybe their best offensive game all season long. For the first quarter, at least, they were keeping pace with the super high-powered Detroit Lions. A Detroit Lions defense that, if you're able to keep pace with their offense, are beatable. They have a secondary that you can exploit, and we saw Calvin Ridley, especially in that first quarter, go for over 100 yards and almost 10 catches. That is a ridiculous stat line in the first quarter, and of course, they just can't capitalize on it after that. The Tennessee Titans are a defense that usually play better than that. It doesn't matter. This is a Titans team that has lots of holes that have already started selling. They traded away DeAndre Hopkins. They traded away Ernest Jones. This is a team that is going to keep on going with its fire sale, and I think they're going to draft a quarterback this year. I think they've decided that Will that Will Levis is not the answer. I know he didn't start this game, but I think they've decided he's not the answer. The Titans down three spots to number 30. The New England Patriots are up two spots, even after losing young rookie quarterback Drake May to a concussion. Hopefully he comes back, if not this week, then soon. They beat the Jets. This was a much better team. We've seen this matchup before, and we saw it with Jacoby Brissett before. We saw this matchup when the Jets weren't as high-powered on offense, when they didn't have Devontae Adams, when they didn't have Hassan Reddick, and yet the Jets lose this time. The Patriots learn from whatever mistakes they made in Week 3 against the Jets, and they make the change. The Jets, on the other hand, did not make the change, and maybe this is just the way that this division is going. Both of these teams have two wins right now. 
The Patriots, in my opinion, seem like they're in a better spot than the Jets are, which is crazy to say as a team that I had as a Super Bowl contender heading into the season. But the Patriots at 29, I I liked what I saw, even without Drake May out there. They're playing like a much more together team, the team that we saw in week one that won against the Bengals. At 28, it's the New Orleans Saints. They're down three spots to get to here. They only put up eight points, six of them on offense. Of course, two of those coming from a blocked punt safety, weird special teams play that got them on the board first. They cannot move the ball on offense, point blank period. They cannot move the ball. They played against a Chargers defense that is solid. Again, the Chargers defense is leading the league in as far as scoring defense goes right now, but a lot of that is based on who they have played. Aside from the Chiefs, they haven't they haven't really played anybody's offense that's super, you know, out there. And they played the Chiefs when they didn't have any weapon to rely on, really. So this is a this is a Saints team that needs a lot of work. We talked about it. They extended Alvin Kamara, which I disagree with as fi- as good as Alvin Kamara can be. He is not going to be good enough to make this team a contender. So I don't really understand why ke- what keeping him around does for this team. They're very injured, though. So I'm going to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. They're still playing off of football. Maybe if Derek Carr can come back, they can play a little bit better, be a little bit more respectable. But as it stands right now, the New Orleans Saints just look like a dumpster fire of a football team. At 27, it's the New York Giants. We just talked about them. Their defense is really good. They have a really good pass rush. Outside of that, they got nothing. The offense has no juice. You can, as much as you want Tyrone Tracy to be that guy, he has a concussion. We see them kind of hyper fixate on one person in this offense. It was Malik Neighbors, right? Since he's come back from concussion, he has about, he has, he has eight catches since he's come back in two weeks. He had 39 targets. He was leading the league. He had 11 catches, 12 targets in like back-to-back games. He was the offense. Then he gets hurt. They take a little bit of a step back. Excuse me, a little bit of a step back from him. They turn to Devin, they turn to the run game and Tyrone Tracy. He goes off. Now he gets hurt. This is a team that needs to be able to spread the ball. Daniel Jones is just not the answer at quarterback. This is a team whose season, it doesn't really matter. They're going to keep losing games. It's not a good team, but by God, keep that defensive line together for when you get a quarterback, because if you get some kind of offense going with this defense, it is a problem. So do everything you can to keep Dexter Lawrence happy and maybe, maybe put him in defensive player of the year conversations. At 26, it's the other New York team, the New York Jets. All the way down at number six, 26, oh, have, oh, how the mighty have fallen, right? The New York Jets, like I was saying earlier, had come into this season with Super Bowl expectations. They have made desperation moves in three straight weeks. They are out of moves now. The Jets have nothing, nothing left to do. Aaron Rodgers is just not cutting it. He is not playing that same level of football that you need Aaron Rodgers to play if he's going to be the whole team. The defense is not playing nearly as good. Everything about this team has taken a step back with just about every single move that they've made. I think this shows a lot of what Robert Sala was doing. I think Robert Sala will get another job because of how hard the Jets have fallen. They just lose to the Patriots, a team that they dismantled the first time they played, a team that could not move the ball against them the first time they played. This is a Jets team that just looks like it's on the steepest descent to the bottom of the league right now. At 25, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. They put up a fight against one of the better teams in the league in the Green Bay Packers. They win, or they nearly win this game. They drive all the way down to tie up the game. The defense, especially the secondary, still isn't good enough. Malik Willis comes in and leads a game-winning drive. Evan McPherson uh, it's not Evan McPherson, excuse me. Uh, you have a game-winning kick, a game-winning kick for the second week in a row for Brandon McManus since joining the Green Bay Packers. The Jacksonville Jaguars played a really good game against a really good team. I'm I think this team has a lot of optimism around it. I'm not going to say it's a good team. Obviously losing Christian Kirk does not help to a broken collarbone. He's done for the season, but if this team feels like it still has something that's buzzing, something that it believes in a little bit, and that is really important when your team is as bad as the Jaguars have been this season. 
At 24, it's the Colts. And we'll go into a deeper dive on the Colts tomorrow when we get into what happened with Anthony Richardson. But I'll just say this right now. Flat out, it's unacceptable how bad he was playing. And I understand why they benched him. He, uh, If you haven't heard, Anthony Richardson was benched today uh, in favor of Joe Flacco. They're 4-4. Four and four. They're fighting for a playoff spot. I understand this decision. It helps them win now, but I think it kind of hurts them a little bit in the future because you don't know unless they've already made their decision on Anthony Richardson, which I'd say if you think tw- 10 games is a good enough sample size, that's fine. I would trot him out there for a little bit longer, but I understand you need to win football games. Joe Flacco is the quarterback of the Colts. I've been selling all my stock because I was real high on this team. With Joe Flacco, I think they have a chance to make the playoffs again, but still, uh, not the way that we expected it to go. Lots of problems, specifically around Anthony Richardson here. We'll see if he gets another shot next season. At 23, it's the Dallas Cowboys, and I punished them not too much for their loss on Sunday Night Football to the 49ers. You can say all you want about this team, about how they're bad, and clearly they are. They're in the bottom half of this power ranking. They're at 23. They're in the 20s. This is not a position that you want to be in, an envied position for a good team, right? This is a team that has, it's looking up at 11 teams right now in their own conference. And yet, I think that was the best game the Dallas Cowboys have played since week one. The Dallas Cowboys came out there on Sunday night, and especially in that fourth quarter, they got some really important stops against a Niners rushing team, a Niners rushing team that's one of the best in the league. They got some really big plays by CeeDee Lamb, something that they hadn't had all season long. There was a lot to be excited about if you are a Cowboys fan from that loss still not a good spot to be in but this was by far their best game of the season even in a loss at 22 it's those cleveland browns how about the browns they are our biggest risers of the week up eight spots from 30 to 22 a big week for them Jameis winston comes in and provides an instant spark offensively you can talk to me about how he almost threw three interceptions and almost cost them the game the key word in anything that you just said there is almost because he led a game-winning drive he led the browns to win that is hope right there in cleveland something they haven't felt all season long and something that i think even in a really, really tough division, the middle of the AFC, that wild card race, is still wide open. They can go and get that if they continue to play like this. Jameis Winston is going to make his fair share of mistakes. That's just how it goes with Jameis Winston. You got to live with those, and you're going to live with those big plays too. I'm excited to see what this Cleveland Browns team can do now that they have a little bit of life in them. A big win over a really good Ravens team. Cleveland Browns up 8-22. to At 21, it's the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins also move up in a loss. I know it's not the most, uh, you know, obvious thing to do here, but Tua came back and he played good football. The offense looked competent for the first time since week one. Really the first time all season. Even in week one and week two when Tua was there, the offense did not look very competent. They were making lots of mistakes. They were able to move the ball downfield in this game. They were able to get their weapons involved. They had at least one drive where they hit a deep shot down the field. This is what you needed. Get Tua involved. This is not a team that I expect to make a deep run this year in the playoffs like I had at the preseason, but this is a Miami Dolphins team that has some life finally. This is a Cardinals team that fights hard. It's what it does. It's what they did last year. It's what they continue to do this year with this coaching staff. The difference is this is a Cardinals team now with some talent, so they're going to be able to beat you because they play harder than you. The Dolphins just need to get that same Cardinals mentality. Hey, we're going to keep playing until the final whistle. We're not going to give up. If they get that in them, they could be a dangerous spoiler kind of team. Dolphins here to 21. At 20, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. Another rough week. A big loss to the Eagles in this one. One that they kind of needed pretty badly. They're falling pretty far behind in the division race. Again, with how muddled the AFC is as far as the wildcard spots, they're not out of it yet. And with how dangerous that offense is, they can still find a way in. The defense has a lot of questions to answer. 
They almost made a couple of big stops against Jalen Hurts and the Eagles there. They were able to slow down that Eagles offense, if just a little bit, but that's a tough that's a tough unit to slow down. The Bengals need to play better as a whole, but I was happy with I, I wasn't angry with what I saw out of this Bengals team. They're only down two. At 19, it's the Los Angeles Chargers. They continue to beat up on the opponents they're supposed to beat up on. They beat the bad teams, and that is how, with the Chargers, you start looking at a team with a respectable football, with a, with a respectable record. They come off of a tough loss against the Cardinals the other week. They go out there and they just dismantle the Saints. That's what you need them to do, a big bounce-back game from Justin Herbert especially. We saw J.K. Dobbins get into the end zone in this one. This was just a well-played game on all units by the Chargers, only giving up one touchdown defensively. It's a solid defense. Like I said, they still haven't really played too many really good opponents. You look at it, they played the Raiders, the Panthers, the Steelers, the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Cardinals, and the Saints. There's not too many of those teams that you point at and you say, wow, that's a potent offense, right? They were able, and the ones that you would say, hey, they have an okay offense, they they lost to. So this is a team that has a lot of work to do, but they are going to beat up on the bad teams, which is why they're in the teens right now. At 18, it's those Arizona Cardinals, another nail-biter for this team. They've now won two straight on walk-off field goals. Congratulations to the Arizona Cardinals. They play a hard-fought game, come all the way back in this one. This was a fun game in Miami. Kyler Murray's playing really good football. James Conner's playing very good football. They finally got maybe the best game out of, or the most consistent game out of Marvin Harrison Jr. against a not great secondary, but still, he was playing for all four quarters. He, I feel like he took some of the criticism that he got from that Monday night football game, and he played a lot better. He's still not playing up to the level that I and a lot of other people thought he would, but still a big game for Marvin Harrison Jr. against a Miami Dolphins defense that has shut down a lot of top wide receivers in the past. And at number 17, it's the Seattle Seahawks. We talked about them being on fraud watch. They continue to stay on fraud watch. What they were just subjected to by the Buffalo Bills was an absolute whooping. They got destroyed in this game. Every facet of it. The offensive line snapped the ball over Geno's head, stepped on Geno's foot on a crucial fourth down. They were unable to convert in the red zone very often. This is a team with a lot of issues going on, but they have a very talented team. They're another one of those teams that, like I've been saying it this whole time, they've got, they're have got they kind of like the NFL's litmus test. If you beat the Seahawks, you're probably a good team. If you lose to the Seahawks, you're probably a bad team. Now, that test doesn't always always work. You know, the Giants beat them. But still, this is a Seattle Seahawks team that I think should hover around 16 for the rest of the year, bearing anything crazy that happens. We're going to take a quick break here, though. When we come back, we finish up our NFL power rankings, 16 to 1. So make sure you stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 